Come on, won't you continue to magnify the Lord tonight? Amen. Continue to praise the Lord. Amen. Won't you give God a wonderful hand clap of praise? Amen. Let's let's magnify him tonight. Let's worship our God. Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. It's good to be with God's people tonight in the house of the Lord. All that love the Lord say amen. Amen. If you're right there online. Amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. Amen. We love the Lord our God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. In 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, verses 23. He says, and this is the commandment. This is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandments. One more time, he said, and this is the commandment. This is the very commandment. He said that we should believe, amen, that we should believe on the name of the Son of God, amen. How many still believe in the name of Jesus Christ? I mean, the Bible said God gave him a name that was above every name, amen, that at the name of Jesus, amen, every knee is going to bow, amen. How many of you with me tonight? How many in church, amen? I still believe in the name of Jesus. He said, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And just for a little while, I'd like to preach a message entitled, Time and Affectation. Time and Affectation. Reverend Robert, sir, won't you stand and pray tonight? Amen. Affectation. It is behavior or speech or a writing that is artificial and it's designed to impress. Meaning someone operates in a behavior or their speech, their words, or maybe a writing that they have, maybe a text message or, or something that they write, but it's actually artificial and its intentions, amen, is to impress somebody. Amen? Affectation. It is also, could also be a study display of a real or pretended feeling. A study display of a real or pretended feeling. You see, it's also an act, listen, an act of taking on a display or an attitude, or a mode of behavior that's not natural. Not a natural, or meaning how that person should be. But it's not natural to oneself, or it's not genuinely felt. Affectation. It's an effort to appear to have the quality it is an appearance or it is the effort. There is effort involved to appear to have the quality. It's a pretense of actually possessing what you're showing. Let me get into it. It's the study to take on the artificiality of a manner and an appearance. And you can find yourself in this place maybe in your old life 
where you even got to the point where you have studied and then you've put it into practice even in your own life to appear in a way or to act as if you have it. Amen. As we as even known in the, 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 the hip hop realm, none of them, amen, they appear as if they actually live that lifestyle. But in reality, they got a lot of their money from the record deal, amen, which loaned them money so that they can pro or have that lavish lifestyle. Style. Amen. But that's really not them. It's not them at all. They're really not making that money. That money was loaned to them by the deal that they got. <laughs> but they're portraying something that they really don't have. They really don't have it in their life. Amen. They really don't have it inside of them. Amen. And we can place ourselves, amen, in our old life. Amen. And this is how we was. Amen. Just being a fake, faking it till we made it, didn't we? Talking about affectation. Your actions weren't really real because it wasn't inside of us. But oh, thank God that our actions are real towards one another because now we got Jesus living inside of us. Amen. So we could show real love and respect. Amen. But. The Bible gets into it about this affectation. As I explained about, you know, it happening in our old life, amen, and it's good, amen, that you're not reaching back into your old life, amen? We shouldn't reach back into our old life. And I've explained it before, amen, with secret sins. You know, in our old life, we got good at secret sins or hiding things, amen, sinning in secret. Amen, we had that practice down packed as we were just naturally sinning or living the life of a sinner. But there was things about the things that we would commit that we didn't want people to know about. I mean, because it would bring shame to us. But I'm telling you, that is not a practice that you can now reach back to just because because you got good at it in your past life. Amen. You shouldn't want to get good at it when you're a Christian. Amen. Amen. You shouldn't want to get good at secret sins or, or not sinning. Oh, thank God for a fellowship. Amen. Being accountable to one another. Amen. But the Lord gets into it. Because just like we had a little bit of affectation in our old life making a pretense, or doing things for a show, for maybe an applaud, or to appear in such a way to impress somebody. That went with some of the clothes we would put on. You know, we would make affectation by having some sunglasses on, and we had those sunglasses on not just to blot out the sun, but to wear it to impress onlookers. Hello. That's affectation. You know, this is really also what the Internet or social media was for. So affectation can just be booming on a higher scale. I can make a pretense of who I want to display myself as so that I can impress people. Man, is that really how they live? Not really. <laughs> They're just showing you what they want you to see so that you could be impressed by their ideas, by their Instagram. <laughs> it's true. But listen, it may also try to creep into your, your Christianity, amen, it, and, and, and let me get into something, but Jesus talks about this behavior or this nature with the Pharisees. He said in Matthew 23, 14, he said, for a pretense, he said, for a pretense, they make long prayers, amen, as an outward show, amen, to show people, amen, this man has a prayer life. I'm impressed. Look how long he may wait in the presence of God, seeking God's face for an answer. Amen, I only got about 15 minutes, amen. I can't pray that long. Look, but look at this man, but Jesus just said, for a pretense, amen, they're pretending, amen. And then also in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, he talks about them. He said, and thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, 
for they love to pray standing in the synagogues, amen, and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men, amen. So they're not standing in prayer, amen, to reach the heart of God, amen. They're not standing in prayer. How many like that Bible study yesterday? I loved it, amen, when we read upon Daniel, amen, in Daniel chapter 9, when some things, amen, hit his heart, and he was talking about Jeremiah, amen, but he went straight into prayer, amen, to seek the face of God, amen, he fasted, didn't he, he prayed and confessed, amen, amen, but these men are in the streets not praying and confessing, but doing it as an outward show, amen, so that men and women can be, amen, uh, be impressed, they want onlookers, and then Matthew 23, verse 5, the Lord just gets straight to it, he said, but all their works, all their works they do to be seen of men. They do to be seen of men. They make a pretense. I mean, they have a life or a, a spiritual life that is actually artificial. I mean, and it's not real. I mean, they just do it. I mean, they, bear, they wear a big cross. I mean, they almost got a cross about that big for a chain. I mean, maybe that's how they think they may show themselves so holy. Amen. Before God, of how much I believe in the crucifixion. I mean, the chain is just weighing down the neck. Can he? Amen. But tonight, I don't care how big your chain is. Amen. But how big is your heart for God? Amen. How much do you really want to see the face of God? Amen. And seek God. Amen. So that you can live right. Amen. God, give me the grace and the strength. Amen. To really live for you. And that's what we want to get into tonight. Amen. But Jesus deals with it. And not only the Lord. But look at Paul. Paul is going to deal with this affectation. And I'm explaining this tonight because Christians or, or uh, believers, amen, and, and some of the time, most of it happens when we first become a believer. I mean, when you fresh in salvation. Boy, don't we need mercy when we're fresh in salvation. Boy, you got saved 11 minutes ago. Amen. We all need grace and mercy. Amen. Boy, because if there was no grace, in, boy, you'd be a burnt skeleton. Hello. We're learning. Amen. Amen. We're learning. We're learning. But look, it could also happen in main time. The main time it happens when you're just fresh as a Christian and learning, learning the Bible, amen, learning how to live for God and be a follower, be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know this. Get this now. You believe in Jesus Christ. You confess your sins, amen. And you desire his blood to be applied to your life. And you want forgiveness, amen. And you confess the Lord Jesus, amen. You believe in all that. You believed in the preaching and you believe. Amen. And you confessed. Amen. You made a heartfelt confession unto God. God did save you. But now. God wants you to keep coming. To hear his word. So that he can get a lot out of you. God wants you to wants to fill you with his spirit. So he can get some things out of you. Yes, you're saved. Amen. Yes, you're bought. You believe. But now with your belief, God said there's work to be done. Amen. We got to get some things out of us. Amen. Oh, he got to get the world out of us. He got to get some desires. Amen. That we try to hold. He got to get it out of us. Amen. And let the Lord do it. Amen. Let God do his work. Amen. He that hath begun a good work in you, amen, shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let God do the work. Let God do the purging. Amen. Let God cleanse your heart. Amen. The work that you think that you could try to do. Amen. Look what I did for myself. I stopped doing this and I stopped doing that. But God, God said, oh, no, salvation's not of you. Amen. You're not going to boast. Amen. Of the very miracle that God performed. Amen. None of that work is going to be of you. Let God do it. Let God cleanse you. Amen. Amen. But look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
He said, know this also, that in the last days, oh, I forgot my thought. This is what I was going to say. Because what we can begin to do, especially early on in our Christianity, when we believe, but it's like we keep messing up. We're learning to trust in him and believe his word, but we're still kind of attached to our ways and our habits. And those are some things God's going to work out. Amen. But what we can't do is to take upon a form to hide. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to take upon another form to hide what's going on rather than humbly coming to the altar and letting God get out of you what's going on. Amen? Don't get good at covering it up with a form. You see what I'm saying? But listen to this. He said, and know this also, this know also, I'm sorry, that in the last days perilous times shall come. This is the Apostle Paul. He said, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Pay attention to this. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. He said, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. He said, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Hello, there it is right there. Without natural affection. We're going to get into it. But truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. He said they're fierce and there's much more that he said. But this is what I want to get to. He said, but having they have a form of godliness. They had a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Amen. In that form of godliness or trying to portray a life, amen, of proof that shows that you really live for God. Amen. And you may try to have that in an outward form. Amen. So that maybe men and women can be impressed the way that you sing for God. Amen. Or be impressed the way that you may come in and try to usher or whatever. Hello, I grew up in a church. Let me tell you, I grew up in a church. And some of y'all may not remember this, but, boy, we were scared of them ushers. Boy, it was the, the old women with the white gloves. Boy, you better not move, sneeze, get up to use the bathroom or get a drink of water. Because the lady with the white gloves don't play. It, they didn't play around. No, they didn't. I mean, you better not cough. You holding in your cough so long, you about to cry. <laughs> How many you know what I'm talking about? Boy, they had them white gloves, boy, you better not move. They had the white gloves and the peppermints. Y'all don't talk, come on now. Let me take you back, amen? But this is what Paul is saying, and we know that a form of godliness or the Christianity that we should really have is on the inside. How many of you know that? But he has the, he's talking about these folks that have an outward appearance or a form of godliness. They're appearing as if godliness is inside of them. But right here, Paul just gave us a list of ungodliness. This is really what's inside of them. They're blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false. That's what's really inside of them. But we know that's not Christian. But I want people to know I'm a Christian. And so to get people to believe that I'm a Christian or a holistic Christian, I have to put on affectation. I have to make a pretense. I have to come in the form of godliness. But right here, this is what I want to get to. He said, but denying the power thereof. Amen. Denying the power thereof. Let me tell you something about myself. Amen. I was a young man. I was just lost. Amen. Came from St. Paul, Minnesota. Amen. And I had some real things going on in my heart, real traumatic experiences. Amen. That's why I got away from home. Amen. I got away from home. I went down to Arizona. Amen. But let me tell you something. I got in the church. Amen. And this preacher was preaching. Amen. And I've never heard a word like that. Amen. But 
it began to work on my heart and work on my life. Amen. This was a man just preaching the word of God. Amen. Telling it like it was. Amen. And I was like, you know what? I left that church service clean. Amen. I left it. I felt something. Amen. I felt something in my life, but I never heard a word like that. Never heard a word like that. Hello, and I grew up in church, but I ain't heard a word like that. Amen. Some of y'all know that's just my father-in-law. Some of y'all are like, why, you just won't say it. Yes, that was my father-in-law, amen, that preacher. God bless my father-in-law, great pastor. But no way under his preaching or real called preachers, amen, that will preach the Bible, there's no way that you can continue to have a form of godliness because with that preaching, it's going to manifest the hidden things of the heart. Amen. Under that preaching, and that's how it was for me. I'm like, man, I'm naked in this church. And, man, I feel like he's talking directly to me. There's no tr a heart of a truce breaker or a false accuser or a fierce person, one who holds unthankfulness in his heart. That couldn't stay in my heart because of the preaching that I was under. But he was preaching in the power of Almighty God. Amen. Preaching with power, amen, of a lifestyle that God has made possible for us to live through Jesus Christ amen and by the power of the Holy Ghost amen so the way that I felt inside I did not have to feel like that amen it wasn't right for me to feel like that because the more that I felt like that you know what I began to do the more I kept feeling like that I was like well you know Christians shouldn't curse and I don't want nobody to hear me curse so I'll just curse within myself I'll say the bad words with nobody hearing it. Hello, God hears it. Hello. I know y'all used to do that to your parents. They asked you to do something, and hey, they might not have heard it, but God did. Hello. And God just might give you, give your parents, amen, discernment like Jesus did. Hello? They would know what you said within yourself. And you know what the Lord would do. When he would be speaking, people would say something within themselves, like the Pharisees, and he'd bring it up right then and there. And they said it within themselves. <laughs> Hello? And he'd bring it up. Let's talk about it. This is what you're thinking? Let's talk. Hello? Hello, you like, man, Lord, you praying right now. God, do not give my mom the spirit of discernment. Please, please. Amen. Thank God for parents. Amen. Thank God for mom. Amen. Folks used to hate when mom would clean up that room. Oh, boy, when mom cleans the room, she going to find some things, didn't she? And you running for the rest of the day. Hello. So if mom can clean up and find some things, don't you think when God cleans up some things, he's going to find it. And he's going to bring it to your attention. Amen. Would mom bring it to your attention? God's going to bring it to your attention. And that's what I'm telling you tonight, the, the moment and the time that I brought and I brought my life under the subjection of hearing God's word. God was cleaning up my life and he was showing me more and more of what he found that I ignored. Some of the things that I left piled in the corner. Under the bed. In the closet. Amen. Clothes in the sink. The things that I left everywhere. God was showing it all that was in my heart. And I, w I knew at that moment I was under the right preaching. Amen. When I moved down to Arizona, I knew it. I knew it. Amen. And God was changing my life. And let me tell you something. I'm never going back. 
Amen. I'm never going back. But right here, we see affectation. He said, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Amen. The power. I want to get into something. Because he said in uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, he said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen? But in deed and in truth. But not only that, before I get there, remember he said, the commandment that was given unto us was to believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? How about it tonight? Amen. You know, amen, there's some things in your heart or how you feel towards someone and how you really feel towards them, but you come in the form of affectation. Amen? Acting like you have forgiven them, but in your heart you didn't forgive them. But you could say Amen. We're commanded to believe in that name. And I want you to know that Jesus' name, amen, has enough power tonight to get hatred out of your heart. Amen. To get lying out of your heart. Affectation. You're lying. You're coming in a form that's not true. You said you forgave. But that's the power that we need. Having a form of godliness, but the power thereof is being denied. And the power thereof is God's power to change us. Hello. How many of you know we're not supposed to stay the same? Amen. Yes, it's come as you are. But you're not going to stay as you are. If I just came in bitter... I'm not supposed to stay bitter because there's power provided to pluck it up by the roots. Amen. So I'm commanded. Amen. We're commanded tonight to believe in that name. Amen. Because when there's things that God begins to clean up and show us. Amen. And we can say, ooh, I got this inside of me. And I can't lie to myself. And I can't lie to others. Amen. I feel some type of way about my pastor. Amen. I feel some type of way about my brother or my sister. And it's not right. Amen. And I'm coming to God in prayer. Amen. And say, you know what? Amen. Bitterness or envy and jealousy see right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come out of me. Amen. You're not supposed to be in me. Amen. I'm tired of a form of godliness. I'm tired of appearing as one that has forgiven, of one that has joy, of one that has no bitterness or no hatred. I'm tired of coming in a form amen of God. Amen. But denying the power of God that is there to have a changed life, a renewed life. Amen. But he said, my little children, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. You see, we live in a day where social media gives everybody a platform. Everybody wants a platform for their words to proceed out of their mouth. And everybody wants their word to be taken as truth. And sure, you may share words of truth, but your truth is in your deeds. The truth is in your deeds. Amen. The truth is in your deeds. And he said, and hereby we know that we are of the truth. He said, this is how we know our, we are of the truth. Not because Pastor McDonough gets up and, and preaches the word and preaches truth. Amen. But this is what proves that I'm of it. And not just myself, but other Christians or our life. This is what will prove not that just we're speaking truth, but that we're of it. Amen. This is how we know that we're of truth. And shall assure our hearts before him. But he says, for if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knoweth all things. Get that. Knoweth all things. 
You may come in affectation before people, but and we might not know, but time will tell. That's why the title of the message is Time and Affectation. Just give it time. The real intent will manifest. The real belief will manifest. But it said God knows all things. We may not know. But you can't put on a form before God because he knows. God knows if we're of the truth or not. But listen, he says, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because, listen, we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God said, love me, didn't he? You say, well, I love God. I'm a Christian. I love God. I listen to nothing but his song. I love God. I come to the house of God and I love to worship. And you may share people, well, I love God. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me, let me you know, bah, 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 bah. I love God. But he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? That's the proof of your love, is if you keep God's commandments. But right here, we know we don't have confidence before God because when we don't keep his commandments, when we know we've been slipping up, when we know we've been falling, and we don't have confidence before him, But we do have confidence before him because we know we have been keeping it. Amen. We know. But our heart condemns us because we know God was warning us not to do that. And we did it anyway. And even though we may have confidence around men because they did not see it, you may not have confidence around God. What do I mean by that? Let me tell you. <laughs> you may check on somebody that comes, or you may see somebody, and they're like, man, how you been? You all right? Oh, yeah, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. God is blessing. God is doing it, you know. But you ain't seen them in church. They may stand confident before you, but to come and hear from God, they're not confident. I feel so ashamed in his presence because of what I did. Won't have confidence. But he said, God is greater than our hearts. Amen. Don't you know God is faithful and forgiving? If you're willing tonight, listen to me. If you're willing tonight, Yes, you may have slipped up, whatever the case is between you and your relationship with God. But you don't have to cover it with an outward appearance in front of the brethren and sisters. But if you're really serious with God tonight, instead of covering it. Now, I'm not talking to anybody here tonight. This is just a message I received. I'm not coming at anybody. I'm not preaching tonight with knowledge. Amen. I'm not getting up, basing this off of a conversation I had with somebody or I talked to somebody or I looked up on Facebook and saw something. I'm not. Amen. So let's just pluck that out. But tonight, if you're serious with God and you love him, you'll come. And put down the form of godliness and let God give you a real godliness. But it starts with you repenting of hatred instead of harboring it 
and then having an outward show to hide it. Let God give you real love. Amen. Stop harboring hate and then appearing with love in your words. Oh, I love you. Well, if you love the girl, marry her. Make a commitment. Uh-oh. Let me back up. Let me. But how about it tonight? How about it tonight? How about it? In God's presence tonight, will you be real with God? Say, God, I've been harboring some things. And I have not been living it, but I've been having an outward show. And it's not really in my heart. But tonight, God, by the power of Jesus Christ, I trust in Jesus to get this out of me. Whatever it may be, how you feel towards someone. And you may try to show your love in words and speaking flowery things, but it's cloaked with covetousness. It's cloaked with a self-serving agenda. But tonight, if you just trust in the name of Jesus Christ, instead of coming in the form of him, denying his power, But being real with God tonight as the musicians begin to play. Saying, God, I've been so unthankful. I've been hating people. I've been holding in all of these things that are not examples of you. But I've been just coming in a form of godliness to cover up how I really feel. But tonight I heard your word. And you dealt with my heart. And I really want you to get it out of me. Will you do that with God? Will you, will you come before God tonight? Because God knows your heart. Amen. And God said the way you show your love to me and how you love me is keeping my commandments. It's in your deeds, not in your words, not just confessing that you know him, but your heart is far from him. But you keep his commandments. And how you will show you love people And not being a fake and phony in front of them is in your deeds toward them. The proof of our love is our deeds in keeping his commandments. And the proof of your love will not just be in word for people, but in your deeds toward them. As you be, come on, won't you come? You can make your way up here tonight. God bless you is my prayer. But let God do a great work in your heart and your mind tonight. Amen.